We will now call to order the Chesterfield Township Meeting Planning Commission meeting on June 7th, 2022. Uh, roll call, I will call the roll. Paul Miller is here, Jerry Alexi. Here. Uh, Rick LaBelle. Here. Brian Demink. Here. Mark Renault. Here. Ralph Jaworski. Here. Jim Klonowski, excused. Carl Leonard. Here. And Brian Carr. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Approval of the agenda. I will make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Support. Motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Demink. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We have two public hearings tonight. Uh, the first one is a proposed amendment to the zoning ordinance, Chapter 76 Zoning, to add Section 3.124, Standards for a New County Line Crossing Mixed Use. MX2 to add section 3.24 MX-2 district additional standards to add section 4.56 accessory dwellings to add new definitions to section 2.2 and amend chapter 76 article 5 subsection 5.34 screening requirements uh, table 5.34.C.2 to add a new line for mixed screening. Uh, Mr. Arroyo, would you like to explain to? Yes. Oh yeah, make a motion to open the public hearing. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. LaBelle, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Arroyo, would you like to give a description to? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, as, as you'll recall, um, actually you've, the next item is a rezoning for your Jefferson mixed use district that's the MX1 district. And as you recall, after the master plan was approved, we started looking at the zoning ordinance and one of the first districts we created was the Jefferson Corridor Mixed Use District, the MX1 district. And so your action in the Township Board's approval actually created that district in the zoning ordinance. Um, tonight is the first actual application to change the zoning <coughs> map to apply it to a piece of property. Now we're looking at the second mixed use district, okay? So this is the MX2 district. So much like the previous one, we're going through the process of creating the district. So this is a public hearing now to, for you to take comments and then ultimately make a recommendation to the township board on um, creating a new MX2 district. And so if you'll recall, this really started with a vision in the master plan. And this graphic is right from the master plan uh, where the planning commission came up with the concept of creating a really unique mixed use district along 26 miles, because the 26 miles on the north side of that graphic, I-94 is on the, on the far left on the west side, and then County Line Road is all the way on the right side of that graphic on the east side. And so it involves creation of a new collector roadway that would run parallel to 26 mile road. And this is just a concept sketch, but it portrays the idea here. And what you see is a grid road network, you see a mixing of uses, you see buildings up close to the roadway, and you see a much more walkable environment. Environment We call this like a village concept. Uh, and so this is kind of that vision that started the process. And so now you have this district, which would actually put the regulations in place that would make this type of development possible. Because you really can't do this in pretty much any of your commercial districts because you have more generous setback requirements. Generally, you have the parking in the front. Here, the parking is primarily in the rear, so it really changes the configuration. Um, so it's intended, as I mentioned, to implement a village-scale development. Uh, the, that, the Jefferson Corridor really more is his Hamlet scale. Remember, we had the village scale, which is a little more intense. The Jefferson Corridor and some of the other nodes were gonna be Hamlet scale, so much smaller. So this has um, a, a variety of uses, ranging from professional office, hotels, technology, commercial retail, and then what we call missing middle housing or residential um, uses, and we'll get into that in just a minute. And it provides for a mix of uses either in a single building or on a single site. So you can have, um, on a single site, you might have 
um, for example, office building next to uh, um, a retail building, or you could have retail on the ground floor with office above. It provides for a, n a number of different iterations where you can mix um, uses on, a, on one individual zoning lot, um, which sometimes isn't really very like possible to do in some of the more Euclidean zoning districts you have that are more single use in nature. Um, so going on to some of the other highlights, um, it establishes uh, streets known as primary retail corridors, and that includes 26 Mile and then the new parallel collector road. And those primary retail corridors tend to have regulations that are associated with property that fronts on those retail corridors. And the idea is that those would be the areas that would have the greatest level of pedestrian connection um, and provide for uh, actually even slightly taller buildings on those roadways too as we try to identify those as being um, those that are primary and have the greatest intensity of uses. And once again, the district does focus on walkability, building form, and that pedestrian scale development. So the residential uses uh, include single family and two family plus missing middle types. Now what are the missing middle types? They include triplexes and quadplexes, which are known in the ordinance as small multiplexes. They include townhouses. They include cottage court bungalows, which are really detached, um, smaller detached residential units, one to one and a half stories tall, but in a very com more com uh, compact uh, development form where the units front on a common open space rather than fronting on a public street. Um, they include carriage houses, which are like accessory dwelling units on an individual lot. Um, and they include apartment and condo buildings of a slightly larger scale that we're more like we're used to um, in terms of multiple family. And these are some illustrations showing you what um, some of these uh, uh, residential types might look like. The bungalow court in the upper left, um, that would be a sidewalk that would actually come up the middle and would serve those and then parking would be either in the rear or it might be on the side depending upon the, the arrangement. The quadplexes are intended to really look more like large homes, more like large mansion homes, but they would have four units, typically two units downstairs, two units upstairs, uh, but you really try to keep just one uh, entryway facing the front so it has that single family look to it. And then you have your duplexes uh, that have two units per, uh, per structure. And then you have the traditional townhouses, which are quite often um, two-story units that are attached side by side um, next to one another. And then the front setbacks are much different than your traditional commercial districts. Uh, they are much closer to the roadway, and we actually have what's called a build-to zone. So along 26 Mile, that would be from 75 feet to 90 feet from the center line. Um, that's a roadway that has a 120-foot um, 120, 120 plan right-of-way, and so you're talking about really 15 feet from the, from the right-of-way there um, in terms of the actual setback, so much closer. And I, I can show you some examples of what that might look like. And then on this, the collector, it's more, more like 43 to 53 feet. Um, your collector right-of-way is 86, so we're talking about zero setback to potentially 10-foot setback along that roadway and then zero to 15 feet along other local streets. So bringing the buildings up much closer to the roadway and then ground floor activation. Once again, in order to encourage people to walk, you wanna have clear um, glass, you wanna have uses that draw attention such as retail, restaurants and the like and, and, to, and to get that kind of, uh, let's, let's see what's at the next building, let's keep walking, let's go to the next building, creating that village um, atmosphere. And so when we talk about what the retail uses might look, for example, even along 26 Mile Road, um, this is an example kind of precedent images that are actually included in your master plan. Um, if you've been to Big Beaver Road near Rochester Road in, in Troy, uh, you can see an example of kind of what this looks like. The, the top two slides show that you've got these retail buildings very close to the roadway um, and there's no parking in the front. Sometimes you might have outdoor dining either in, the, in front of the building or in the side of the building. And then the bottom slide shows the rear of the building where all the parking is. Um, so it really changes the way the roadway looks. Uh, you get to show off the architecture of the building rather than the parking lot to the people driving by, which we think is a really great thing. You know, it kind of makes it, this will make it look different than other parts of Chesterfield. Certainly you've got your traditional retail corridors with your large big box uses that's great, it's nice to have those choices. Now this would bring, bring something that looks a little bit different. And so the building height uh, 
typically a maximum of 45 feet or three stories for those lots that front on 26 mile or the collector streets and then 30 feet or two stories for those on the local streets. And commercial buildings are limited to 35,000 square feet uh, unless you can justify something larger by special land use. Once again, you've got big boxes already in this community, um, probably more than you could possibly ever want, right? You've got every, every major um, chain that has a big box is, is located here. This is not the place for that. You have places for that. This is for smaller users um, and once again, trying to think about what you would have in more like a downtown setting. You wouldn't have those types of, typically have those types of larger users or they might be limited um, and you would have to make a special <coughs> case through a special land use process for that. And then in order to encourage pedestrian activity, and instead of drive up windows, restaurants would be able to have walk up windows. So you could go up and place an order and be served as, as you're strolling down the street and um, possibly um, it could be something as simple as ice cream, it could be um, something to drink, or it could be um, actually take out service uh, for food. Um, so the road network, as I mentioned, is a grid style network with short block lengths, 600 feet maximum, which encourages walkability. It basically, you can turn the corner, go to the next block, and you can also find a way that if you park your car, uh, you don't have to walk forever to, in order to get to the next block in order to cr cross back over to get to the front of the stores. Um, On-street parking is envisioned on both the collector <coughs> roadways and the local streets, obviously not on 26 mile road, but on the interior streets, that's where that would be. And then outdoor dining is allowed and it's also encouraged. So that's a short overview of the district. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there anybody from the general public would like to speak? Could you come up to the podium and for any questions? Please sign in, Linda. Hi, Linda Hartman, 48221 Forbes. Um, how are you, we don't own the land, so people can buy the property. I understand if it's zoned this way, that's what the encouragement is to build this way, but it sounds like an old fashioned town like New Baltimore or Romeo, and that's kind of, the old towns Got a w people park behind them, and they also live upstairs from them. But it seems like desired parking is in front of stores, not in the back of them, unless you have the back door be the front door and the front door be the back door. Um, anyway, um, just a little explanation on that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? This is going to be somewhere like the over behind Costco too, like how they got those stores back there where they have businesses up front, living quarters above, and then you have parking behind. And then, like you said, right over there at 16 and Rochester Road by Mission Barbecue and all those other. Right, that's exactly that, that was the picture that's right what by I Mission Barbecue. Yeah, exactly. Over there, I what you're talking uh -huh. about? Yeah, where they're closer. So, and that's and, and to answer the question that was <clears throat> the, that uh, the Linda had, that that's new, to, relatively new development that right. is right up to the roadway and they're doing very well. They, those businesses have been there. And, and, you, seem, and, you, and you've got Big Beaver there, which is what? Like four or three lanes each way each with direction. a large medium, yeah, right. right? With your turn lanes. And that's actually an implementation of the Big Beaver Corridor study, which I did for the city of Troy. And we actually talked to them about bringing the buildings up to the road and then they amended their ordinance and then that's development now that you see that's implementing the Big Beaver Corridor study. And then on the back side, then they have like Nordstrom Rack and uh, mm -hmm. larger REI boxes. and all the ones behind it with right. the large parking areas are behind it, front of it, right? Okay. Now that's a little different here. You wouldn't necessarily have that <laughs> because it depends on the size of those because you're not going to have the bigger boxes, but you might still have something of 20 to 30,000 square feet behind it um, that would serve as a, as, a, as a retail store or a drug store or something like that that could still function, even a small grocery store. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rennell? Mr. Carr? No, I, I think it's fantastic. I remember doing it uh, when we were developing it and I thought it was a great idea then and I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Mr. Leonard? Yeah, I like the uh, diversity, you know, to change things up a little bit. 
so we're not rubber stamping every part of the township. So I, I'd like to see a little change up. Thank you. Mr. Jaworski. What we do like about it is finally the thing is addressing the feeder streets and the traffic. You know, we have so many entries right off the main road. Um, I do like the idea of bringing in new ideas and, and <coughs> thinking outside of the box, outside of the whole township box, I should say. Um, the only concern that I have about it is we're up, we're up to your mic. <coughs> The only concern I have about it is, is it limiting that corner? That's it. Okay. Mr. Lexi? Yeah, I think it's a pretty good idea also, especially with the price of gas right now. You could pull in the back there and go to hit all of them stores at one time. I think that would be a great, great idea. Thank you. Mr. LaBelle? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm, I'm also in favor of this is very progressive forward thinking and um, i think this is the next phase of um, what we're going to see elsewhere throughout our county and through our state thank you thank you also i think um there in shelby township they have this on uh between hall road and 21 mile they have a, a section yeah a section bet between shaner and hayes that mm -hmm. is like that it, it's pretty nice looking i'm in favor of it Mr. DeMay? It also goes what we uh, discussed at board level uh, at the last meeting, uh, getting sewer up there, because we know with the new Ascension Hospital going in, they're putting in their own sewage pumping station, and it's already been at board level now, trying to get a sewer line up there through bond issue and bring it up from uh, New Haven Road to Washington to Burden, something like that. So we're looking at that from board level right now to get sewer up there, because right now there's no sewer up there. Okay, thank you. Anybody else like to speak? If not, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Aye. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Alexi. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Our normal procedure is to wait two weeks, but I will poll the commission to see if they want to vote tonight or wait two weeks. Mr. Alexi? Aye. Mr. LaBelle? Sure. Mr. Demink? Tonight. Mr. Renault? Tonight. Mr. Jaworski? Tonight. Mr. Leonard? Tonight. Mr. Carr? Tonight. Mr. Miller? Tonight. With that, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a, mo make a motion to approve the proposed <coughs> amendment to the zoning ordinance, Chapter 76 zoning, to add Section 3.1.24, standards for a new county line crossing mixed use to MX. Um, to add section 3.24 MX2 district additional standards, to add section 4.56 accessory buildings, to add definitions to 2.2, and amend chapter 76, article 5, subsection 5.34, screening requirements. Um, I'd like to make a motion to um, request the main board to. Um, as a recommendation from this board to approve this proposal. We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Our second public hearing tonight is a rezoning request number 354. It's a request to rezone property west of Jefferson Ave, north of Cotton Road from C1 local commercial to MX1 Jefferson mixed use located at parcel ID 15-09-28-326-043 and parcel number 15-09-28-326-044, parcel 15-09-28-326-050, uh, 15-09-28-326-051, 15-098, 0928-326052 and 15092836-53. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Support. We have a motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Alexi. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Arroyo. Yes, um, you have a uh, petition from an applicant um, who is requesting 
the rezoning of certain properties that have just been described to the, um, from C1 to the MX1 district. Um, this property uh, fronts on Jefferson Avenue. Um, you can see there's, um, in, in, if you look at our letter, there's a, a existing commercial property to the east and to the west. Uh, nearby, just to the south, is the, uh, um, the Bayside Car Wash, is kind of give you a little perspective. Um, you have existing residential behind um, this property that is zoned R1B. Uh, and if you look at um, the top of page two of our letter, we give you both the zoning and we also give you the land use classifications. Um, there's also commercial development across the street currently. Um, you have John's Cutlery and then a small other shop building. Um, the master plan envisions this area as local, commercial, or mixed use, and that's what led to the creation of that MX1 district. And this is the first property that's applying for it. Um, and this allows, <coughs> this district allows for a variety of uses, including um, residential, uh, it can allow retail and, and office development, for example. Uh, in our letter, we provide our typical questions that we ask and have you answer as part of um, a zoning map amendment. Um, one of the first questions we're gonna look at is, is this consistent with the master plan? Yes, it is consistent with the master plan. Um, what are the impacts um, would the requested rezoning have on public services? One of the things we do identify is that uh, a part of this property is in a special flood hazard area. Um, so when a site plan comes forward, that will have to be addressed in terms of specific um, once verifying that. And then also um, there may be some offsetting construction techniques that might have to be used and a, and a permit will be required uh, in order to construct uh, within a special flood hazard area so that the, it doesn't increase the potential for flooding on other um, offsite properties. Um, and we talk about, I'm not gonna go in detail into every single question here, I'm just kind of hit some of the highlights. Um, would development under this zoning be able to meet the, um, the new zoning district requirements that's under number seven? We would anticipate that there is enough property here that's being rezoned that looking at the district that you should be able to um, craft a plan that would in fact meet, meet the um, requirements of the district. Um, and we don't, and then the other key one is number 10. We, we don't see this as being a spot zone because number one, it's consistent with the master plan. And that's the number one question you ask regarding um, a spot zone typically. And this is also something that is being created um, to establish this district, which is another um, proposal that's consistent with the master plan. So um, our key finding here is that this is consistent with the master plan and your action would be uh, um, when you're ready to make a motion um, and you, if you choose to do so, it would be a recommendation to the Township Board. Thank you. Anybody here from the public would like to speak on this matter? Please come up to the podium, state your name, and sign in for the record. Hi, my name's Steve Angst. Um, I've been employed in Chesterfield for over 30 years. Bought a house in Chesterfield 18 years ago. And I'm, my lot is directly behind this, um, th this property that we're talking about. When I bought this property, I checked out the zoning, said C1, and I thought, yeah, I could live with it. When I'm looking at this new zoning, I'm seeing it's pretty broad. As far as apartments, anything else, I'm mean, not going to have structures back there just towering over my three-bedroom ranch house. My property value is very important to me, and I think this is, I, I'm pretty upset about this. I don't think that this is the right zoning to do. I think C1 is what it should be. I think there is a problem with flooding back there. We have a retention pond, and I've been <coughs> watching this for a while, and I see what the the zoning board was doing before, and I do have copies of this, is they're trying to tie a retention pond from that area into our retention pond on top of it. That was the plan that I saw in the past. I just think this is a bad idea. I mean, I, I, we, we haven't talked to the other neighbors, and they're here too, and they're concerned too. I think C1 is just fine. 
Thank you. Thank you. This, this property is already 10 years old. It's still back in MX1, right? Uh, <clears throat> Patrick Antazuski, I go by Tony. Um, I live in the lot next door to Stephen Deb Angst here. Um, <clears throat> I was the first person in the new development back there. And when I got my final grade, I thought I had, and, and brought in some soil, I thought I had a pretty good grade. Um, since that time, neighbors were built around me. And yes, I, my backyard floods on a consistent basis. I have a uh, storm sewer in the back corner of my yard, and I'm constantly getting floods back. <coughs> what is behind me, I understand, was some, some sort of wetland. I don't know what percentage it is. Um, again, when I bought the lot, I knew it was C1, and again, I could live with that also. We were assured there was going to be no fast food. There's going to be no like grease traps from a Chinese restaurant or so on and so forth. Um, I think what is possibly planned in this small little section, um, it, it should not be the example of what you want in the future, at least not in that location with already established houses. These are the taxpayers that vote you in, keep you in. We rep we, you represent us as the community. We would like you to help protect our property values and not allow this to happen there. I don't want a business on the first floor with, with a couple of stories of, of housing on top. I don't want a, an apartment building there. Um, please look out for, for us little people who don't get to sit in on all these meetings. I'm, I'm all about the, 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 the person who owns the property, uh, developing it as it is in the township, or selling it off to somebody who's interested in doing that. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Marty Neister. I've been here before in regards to rezoning um, certain areas back behind our, our homes. Um, so when I got this letter, um, you know, and I appreciate you guys putting up your master plan for the other development, right? Where, where is, I guess, the, the pictures for this? What is the idea for this? Are you just putting it out there to rezone? Is it four different owners of those parcels? Is it one owner? Can you give us a little bit more information? Just, just in, I mean, everybody's looking at me like uh, deer in headlights. But what I'm asking is, are there different, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six different parcels, am I correct? Yes? Is it one owner? Is it one owner? It's one owner. So the same, did I hear yes? I'm sorry. It's from here to here. Six parcels. Okay, so it's on the, it's on the north side of the car wash. It's not on the south side of the car wash. Correct. Is that correct? Okay, so I'm gonna back up my neighbors here because, is, again, is it one owner for all those parcels? So what is the master plan? So this person has to be, can you acknowledge who that is? Can you explain like what their plan is that connects to your master plan? When you're, when you're done answering the questions, we will answer them. So that way we get When out. I'm done answering the questions. When you're done asking the questions, oh, we will answer Oh, asking the questions, them. okay. So, okay, so then the master plan for um, Chesterfield, um, I'm looking at this land here and just to reiterate what my neighbors were just saying is there is a lot of concern. Obviously, there's a lot of wetlands back there. We got kids back there. We play back there. It's not, you know, harmonizing to our neighborhood. Um, and I feel as if, like, things are just, they move forward in this township and without any discussion of what that plan is. 
it's uh, to rezone for what? Who's the owner? Um, and I, I hope to, you'll answer that when I'm done. Secondly, you know, I see the master plan or your intent for this other um, proposal, right, on 26 Mile, but there's open land for the big master plan of Chesterfield just by um, Cabela's. What's going on with that, you know, development? Why are we jumping Ma another development? Ma'am, you need to address the issue of this property on Jefferson, not town center. That's a whole different. Okay, we'll go into we, that. We but need, what we, I, need, we need to. We we'll need to stick to this. But what I'm we getting need to address, at is, it seems like this. The subject matter it seems I'm, I'm addressing the subject matter. You, if you give me a you chance, went off, it you just went seems, off I am getting off the subject for one second because I feel as if there's this gets priority. Something's moving up in priority. Well, explain that to me then. So I have three questions: Who's the owner for all these parcels? What is their intent after they rezone this? I want to know if it's going to be harmonizing to our neighborhoods. And then why is it moving up in priority to the old development that's sitting there? Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Hi, Linda Herman. Um, would you explain uh, the difference because you want to rezone this to MX1 and you just described MX2, and I really don't know the differences between those two. Could you explain that and um, how it would work on this property? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Monte, you want to speak? Good evening, I'm John Monte from Project Control Engineering. I'm here on behalf of the uh, property owner, which is Pat Ecovetti. Um, he owns all of the lots, so I'm trying to answer a few of the questions that you do have. You, um, at one time we came in, uh, Mr. Ecovetti has owned this property for many, many years. He's had it for sale, for commercial for many years. He's not been able to sell the property at C1. The, he did a plan quite a few years ago, too, with a strip sh shopping center there and tried to market that and wasn't, wasn't successful in marketing that. We came here maybe a year ago to try to rezone it to residential so that we could possibly do, do some single family there, which would be compatible with your properties. And at the time, this whole mixed use was in the operation uh, or being considered by the Planning Commission and Township Board. So um, we waited until this came about because th this mixed use does permit residential in the area. So it does give the property owner the ability to do some single family there as well as commercial if, if something comes up. There was a recent inquiry about a small piece of commercial right next to the car wash uh, from what I understand, however, nothing is solid with that. So, um, so you may be surprised. You may find that it's going to be extremely compatible with your neighborhood. That maybe it will get develop, developed as single-family residential lots. The um, what else is here? I, I didn't understand the question on priority. We just happened to be here because we started initially with this project some time ago and then just waited for this change in the zoning ordinance to be able to take advantage of it. We do realize that um, this property may have some flooding in some areas, and that's our job, that's what we do for a living, is to figure out how to take care of that and make sure that we don't, and one of the requirements is that we do not drain onto any of the neighbors or create any additional flooding for any of the neighbors. It's an engineering requirement here in the township that's followed very specifically. So if there's other questions I could answer, I'd be happy to try. Well, oh, hold on. Hold on. Please come up and address the board.
please? So the original plan that we saw please? that was approved many years ago. Can you please state your name for the record? I'm sorry, my name is Deborah Angst. I'm at, um, on Ratchet. Uh, it showed a, a, a detention pond that was kitty corner to our current detention pond, and that was going to um, hopefully solve the problem of the flooding. I'm just wondering if that is in your plan. Is that part of your plan? There's no plan right now. Is is there some philosophy of how you're going to stop the flooding? Um, yes, again, John Monte. Um, we do not have all the final details at this point. We're trying to get the property rezoned so that we can do something with it. And the so there's not been any type of formal overall engineering plan that's been created. There's nothing that's been done other than uh, looking at this, potentially putting it to some residential lots, possibly a small commercial, but that's it at this point. So we have to get into the engineering design and believe me, the township makes us follow the requirements to make sure that nobody gets flooded. So I don't have a plan that I can say to you we're draining over to here or we're draining over there. I don't know that at this point. Any other questions? Please come up to the podium. Um, I've signed in before. I'm Steve Angst. Um, what I'd like to say is I think if um, there was a zoning that he's, that you could just say if it was residential that you're going to put in, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I kind of think we'd hope standing with open arms and say, yeah, but being an MX1, that is a pretty broad assortment of buildings. And for us to stand here and say, oh yeah, come on. It, we're thinking of our property values. Thank you. Again, Patrick Antazuski. And um, Mr. Monty, I hear you say the rezoning would permit single family, but what does it not omit, and I think that's what Steve is talking about here. C can you, as, as a group, inform us our worst case scenarios, what this rezoning would allow in that area? And maybe put yourself in our seat for a minute and, and alert us to wh what that actually is. You know, I, I hear it could be commercial. And, you know, you say you may find, you may find. There's a lot of maze, and I can appreciate that. But there's a lot of things that we may also find that we wouldn't be happy with as homeowners back there. So as a board, would you maybe clue us in on what those things might be, please? Uh, Thank Mr. you. Mr. Arroyo, you want to touch base on that? Sure. Um, just by way of background, as, and I talked about this a little bit earlier, the MX1 district came about as part of the study of the, of the master plan that took place by the Planning Commission um, and was ultimately approved by the Planning Commission and the Township Board. Um, the idea here was that when the master plan was being updated, the Planning Commission took a look at the entire township and particularly along the Jefferson Corridor. And a couple of observations. Um, one is that uh, there have been a number of ZBA variances that have occurred over the years along this corridor for people who want to develop because a lot of the properties here um, are somewhat shallow in depth and when you try to apply the underlying zoning to um, development of the site, many people have, have basically said we can't develop or we can't improve this, our property um, based on the existing setbacks that are in the districts that currently apply. Uh, there are also kind of a variety of different districts along uh, the Jefferson Corridor. You go from <coughs> residential to commercial and the like, and all those districts don't have the same setback requirements. So as you drive the roadway, um, you get a variety of different setbacks, even though the corridor kind of has a similar feel as you drive it. Um, also, as part of the master plan process, the Planning Commission looked at the fact that there are a number of assets along this corridor. You've got um, you've got Brandenburg Park, you've got 
um, a number of uh, marinas. You've got um, the establishment of a non-motorized pathway that's partially uh, in place. You have uh, access to kayaking. You have, um, th this is a heritage route in terms of this has historical context. This is where um, Native American settlers came and fished and, and hunted. Um, this is where the Underground Railroad actually brought slaves, uh, escaping slavery through <coughs> to Canada. Um, and the idea through the, the master plan was to really try to tie that all together in a district where um, one, you could finish out the non-motorized transportation corridor, so there's actually a pathway, um, try to solve some of these setback issues um, try to make this a place where people might want to see it as a destination where they might ride a bike, um, go up to Brandenburg Park and then maybe ride a bike to some shops. Try to encourage some more residential and maybe a little bit different style than um, has been seen. You do have a, kind of a mixture. You do have some apartments. You do have single family. You have a wide variety. And maybe let planning commission thought about, let's see if we can get that all in a district where everybody has similar setback requirements. Uh, and where there's some coordination. Um, so that's really a little bit of the history as to where this district came from and what is, and one of the things I know the Planning Commission was really adamant about is they didn't want to see this as a very intense corridor with large um, retail stores. So for an example, in C1 now, you could put in a retail store that's 20,000 square feet. In the MX1 district, you're limited to 6,000 square feet for a retail store. So in some instances, the MX1 district can be less intensive than the C1 district. But the MX1 district does allow some, uh, does allow some restaurants. It allows um, other uses that maybe you might perceive as being more intensive. So there's really, it's not, a, it's not an apples to apples comparison. There are some uses that are more intensive, some that are actually less intensive. Um, the current uh, C1 district allows professional office, medical office, um, residential uses, single family in particular, um, local convenience, retail and service establishments. Those are the ones up to 20,000 square feet. Um, carry out restaurants, daycare and nursery school, dry cleaning, gasoline service stations, um, which um, would not be allowed by the way uh, in, um, in, in, the, in the new district. Uh, plan unit development, um, and then veterinary offices and the like. So that's what is currently allowed under the existing um, C1 district. In the MX1 district, you've got eating and, and drinking establishments um, that include uh, bakeries, cafes, restaurants, bars, and the like, uh, provided they shall not include a drive through uh, Banks, credit unions, professional medical office, local convenience and retail service established up to 6,000 square feet, small retail service uses such as live work within a residential building. So someone could have a um, upholstery shop on the ground floor and live above it, um, that type of thing. Um, existing gas stations are allowed to remain, but no new gas stations can occur. Um, whereas you could under the C1 district come in and establish as a special land use, um, a new gas station. Um, artist but studios and I don't think a gas station would be allowed there because they're not a corner, right? Oh, not this, right now. Yeah. I'm talking about the district in general, correct. And it's also located in the Right. Um, and once again, this is just a rezoning, it's not a site plan. Um, outdoor merchandising associated with the retail shop, so have providing for outdoor um, um, display of, of goods while the business is open, outdoor dining, bed and breakfast inns, veterinary offices, uh, small scale breweries and distilleries, plan unit development and single family dwellings, duplexes, um, multiple family, um, and then recreation, education and assembly uses such as um, a, a recreation center or a health club up to 6,000 square feet. We're not talking about a large um, um, LA fitness here. We're talking about something very small. Publicly owned buildings, daycare, nursery, community centers, um, churches and places of worship, libraries and museums and the like. So those are the types of uses that are in the existing uh, MX1 district that would be allowed if, on this property if it were to be rezoned. Um, so that's kind of a, a snapshot of why that district was established um, and it's up to individual applicants to come forward and request the rezoning. And so that's what this is tonight. So. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. one, one more. So uh, Marty again. Uh, looking.
differences, just say the differences between the C1 and the MX1, because it sounds like they're pretty similar, but maybe different in sizes, and then excluding some maybe bars. I mean, they both have restaurants, right? They both have small office buildings, duplexes. So you could build up as well as out, correct? There's up to three stories. So that's so that wouldn't be harmonic to our subdivision. So um, I get the assets down Jefferson. The assets are beautiful when you keep moving down Jefferson, but we want to make sure that it remains on our side as well, and we don't put like duplexes up, you know, um, things that cause maybe light pollution and just some other things going against the master plan. How many years are you guys in your master plan, by the way? How many, it's 25 year master two, plan, but how many years, years are we in it? Two. We just redid Two years. Oh, because we were in it. Just, hold on, Mr. Yep. The planning commission just redid a whole new master plan for the township. Oh. And there was a lot of public hearings that the public was invited. And we, we've had master plans before, but we just renewed it. Yeah, because I think the last time I was here, maybe two last years ago. Last time you were here, because I remember exactly who you were, mm -hmm. with some other residents was with the car wash and the detail shop, yeah. correct? So I'm glad you remembered. I'm, anyway, I'm you were 25 years, the 25 year plan, we were already like 15 years in. So you guys redid the plan, which I didn't get a notice on that or I would have oh, came so to the hearings, but that's for, nonetheless. For the renewing of the master plan, communities redo it all the time because things renew. It's just like- No, it's great. We're I, just I like growth in our township. And I just want to make sure it fits, right? Especially behind our homes. Um, but if this is considered for rezoning, which I hope it's not, from there, can it be rezoned to something different? How quickly? An applicant can ask for rezoning of any property anywhere in the township at any time. At any time? Anybody can. You can ask okay. for a property on your property. So, anybody is allowed to request. Doesn't mean it's going to be granted. Okay. Um, no different than someone in your subdivision a while back wanted to have a daycare, run a daycare house out of a out of a house in your subdivision, and we were all here. That's a couple of years ago. You guys remember that? Yeah. And and that that was that was in your subdivision. Oh, I don't like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let, me, let me explain. You said something, sir. Let me, let me explain something for my other board members. I'm the only person that is elected. I'm the township liaison. I'm on the board with my other six counterparts. All these people up here are residents just like you. They are appointed by the board, so they're not elected. They are residents just like every one of you. I'm the only one that's elected by the voters. So on your statement where you said that, I want to make that clear. They're appointed. They're residents just like you. They're not elected. I'm the only elected person up here. Um, I, wait. I, I, I just want to make sure that's you have that's to come understood. To the podium. Okay. There's somebody there. Go ahead. Again, I, I did that with all. No, no, respect. I know I understand, but I just oh, want to make, and, make and sure it's I'm understood. I'm asking you. Normal as procedure a group. is you can come up one time, and everybody's here been up multiple times, so make the question your last questions because we're going to end the public hearing soon. I think this is in all our best interest to have good open dialogue and communication. Right, but I'm thanking you all for the time that you spend on representing us as a community, and I'm asking that you help safeguard. I, I would like this not to be, I, I don't know enough about it right now, clearly. I, I'm asking that you as a group look <coughs> out for the residents that are in that area and that you don't make this a your, your first Go, I understand the MX2 is, is something new. I know MX1 is not anything new. I, I'm asking that you don't use this as an example. Look out for us if you would, please. My, my house is right behind there. For 19 years, I, I've loved the place I live. I love Chesterfield here. Uh, I don't want an eyesore going up. If, if it's gonna be a, a beautiful residential area, I, that would be great. If it's gonna be some office that you know we're not going to have 11 o'clock at night music going while you know we're trying to do our things that's great i just ask that you please look out for us thank you anybody else 
We have a final question. Okay. Um, I guess one more if you're gonna let me. Um, you'll have a follow-up meeting for us, right? So there'll be a second meeting to come back to with more questions, I'm assuming? Possibly. Depends how we vote tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bonnie, did you want to talk about any of them? Thank you. Uh, I'll bring it back to the board. Mr. Domingue. When this comes up, it's a rezoning. So we, and Mr. Monty has already said, there is no set <coughs> plans what's going to go in there. If they get the rezoning, and let's say they want to put a store up there, that store will have to come in front of us again to be for the size to go in there or whatever is going to go in there unless it's residential. But that's what this MX is. It's no different, and I'm just going to throw this out there, than buying a house that backs up to a golf course. And guess what? The golf course no longer wants to be in, and they put a, they put a subdivision. Go out to Macomb Township. You got Wolverine. You got all the ones out there. They're all gone. I mean, people say, well, you know, I built on a golf course because it's going to if my property levels are growing. Well, guess what? The golf course is gone now, and there's a sub going in. You can't stop development. Okay, I mean, we understand where you people are coming from. You're, you're in a sub. Jefferson's been there a long way. That car wash has been there, I don't know how many years, but it's been there. I think since I've been on this board, and I've been on this board 18 years. So, and I remember the whole thing with the detail shop, because I remember you specifically, Mrs. Neister here. Okay, so um, it's up to these people and everybody that sits on this board where it is. And that is the procedure, as Mr. Miller stated, we do it at board level too. When you come to a meeting, you get three minutes to come up and address the question and you get one shot at it. So that, that's, that's common board practice. Mrs. Hartman knows that too from being on the board all the years that she's come. So that's, that's practice. So Mr. Miller did let it go with people coming up a few times. So he is following pr protocol. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Renault. Just wanted to clarify something. Um, Farad, if you could. I, you covered it earlier, but I wanted to point out um, in the current C1 district, the way it is right now, someone could throw up a 20,000 square foot building and it could be any number of businesses, correct? Yeah, any of the uses that I described, right, and they, and they could be up to, one use could be up to 20,000 square feet, correct? And the MX1 is confined to no more than 6,000 square feet for any yeah, for retail, for retail, you, the retail uses that I talked about, um, they are limited to the, to the 6,000 square feet, yes. And then MX1 also allows, though, for residential use. If that was decided to go that route, they could do that as well. Right. Also, residential uses are allowed, that, the ones that I described, yes. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carr. <clears throat> uh, my position hasn't changed from the last time they were here, so I support it. I supported, obviously, the master plan because I was part of it. And I think that one way or another, like Mr. Dominic said, we, have, we can't stop development. I mean, these, these lots have been vacant for decades. And, you know, I, I do remember also the, you know, the car wash and a lot of you, the <coughs> residents were upset because they didn't want a car wash. So then we stopped that because of the, the pushback. And even though I voted to put the car wash there, um, the detail the shop, detail correct. Shop. Yeah, it was an expansion of the car wash, the, you know, but correct. Yeah. yeah, so, but, you know, I know, uh, you know, the, the residents were hesitant on that too. So, to me, MX is a, MX1 is a really good compromise. I think it allows a lot of latitude for residential, but also, you know, some mixed uses. Um, you know, I mean, I think I'd rather have that than the commercial space behind my property. But, so from my perspective, it, I support it. I think it's a good idea. And we'll see what plan they you know they put together thank you mr. Leonard um, yeah this has gone round and round with uh, trying to develop it as it is now with the uh, detail shop it, it just seems like it could be worse if it stayed the same with something up to 20,000 square feet um, this seems like it's really tame compared to some of the things that could happen there and the little village atmosphere just seems like a it'd be a nice mixture how it all shakes out uh, as this moves forward if it's rezoned it's hard to say but it, it just feels like there's more teeth into doing something very nice so kind of leaning towards 
uh, this. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jaworski? Yeah, in, we talk about harmonizing in the neighborhood. And we put two and a half years into the master plan, three years, and the basic goal of that master plan was to harmonize not just the neighborhoods, but the entire township. And it was to attract a lot of young folks to the neighborhood or to Chesterfield Township with things that they want. Um, the public was also invited to comment and <coughs> submit their wish list on what they want. And one of the things was bike paths. And in order to get a lot of those bike paths, we had to update our master plan so that we could go and attract additional funds. Is that correct? We, we, that master plan is then used to solicit state funds and, and federal funds and things of that nature. So there's a ton of thought that process that went into this. And from my perspective, there was, I think there was a storage lot that was proposed for that spot a long time ago. So, yeah. so anyways, but in the big picture, we are on your side. We sit through each one of these meetings. We, many of us have been, served multiple three-year terms. So we sit and we listen, and, and I'm, just, I'm just saying that because it's not a debate right now. It's kind of, we are listening to you, we're processing everything in our head, we're listening to the, not just you, but the entire community. And I think if, if we do it right, and as a community, put these thoughts into action, it could benefit your property. So from my angle, I personally feel that this proposal supports not just your neighborhood, but the entire community, and it, it would just pay a lot of benefits. And, and again, I think one of the things we need to do a better job of educating the public on the process, process of what goes in. I hear you with the flooding, right? The flooding will be addressed at the time that they submit their plan. We talked, you asked about lighting. There has to be a full light plan submitted and you have to make sure that it doesn't exceed the boundaries. So these are all things and the only way they're gonna invest in those plans, because those plans are a lot of money. They need to understand what they can put there. And you know, you're looking at that property, it's been vacant a long time. If there's something big that was, wanted to go in there, it would have been in there already. So right now, you're looking, at, I'm, this is just me speaking, but you're thinking it's probably gonna be fitting of a residential location. So again, I just, again, I think we need to do a better job of just educating the public. We sit up here for years on end to listen to everyone. We don't wanna make it a debate. And it, it, it just, understand the process and how it would work and I think rezoning this just makes sense. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lexi. I don't have any additional questions. Mr. LaBelle. I'd just like to make a couple of comments here. Um, one of the, you know, the questions that I had had is um, as it's zoned right now, um, a commercial building up to 20,000 square feet can be as tall as 28 feet, which would be a very large building in your backyard, in your backyards. And the other statement is that I would, I will personally guarantee to all of you that, and, and I've done this many times in the past, that when a site drawing, when, when Mr. Monty puts together something or any architect or engineer puts together a drawing, I thoroughly look through the drawings to make sure that it doesn't impact the neighbors. Make sure that they're screening. Make sure that, that the homes that are in the area are protected from any kind of commercial atmosphere. Um, and um, I am in favor of this. It, it, uh, it does make sense for this piece of property. Now, um, with that, I am I'm excited about it. Thank you. I'm also in favor of this, but you must remember that any plan that is put forth on that property has to come back to the Planning Commission so we can vote on it. And if it's not a good plan, then we will vote it down. One last question. I ask that when every one of you votes tonight, you vote as if your house was lot 104 or 105 right behind there and use that as your perspective when you vote, please. Can I tell you a little story about this? Sure. We had to have a subdivision put behind my house that has been vacant for 25 years. 
and now we're going to get a subdivision. All the, all the deer are going to be gone. Everything's going to be gone. And I had to vote yes on it because, you know, it was the right thing to do. But I didn't want it, but I had to vote yes. So, yeah. well, I know that. So we'll make sure, you know, that something nice goes in there. Okay? With that, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. A motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Lexi. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Our normal procedure is to wait two weeks, but we will poll the commission to see if they want it to vote tonight. <coughs> Mr. Lexi? Tonight. Mr. LaBelle? Tonight. Mr. Demink? Tonight. Mr. Renault? Tonight. Mr. Jaworski? Tonight. Mr. Leonard? Tonight. Mr. Carr? Tonight. Mr. Miller? Tonight. With that, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to uh, recommend to the township board to approve the rezoning of number 354, requesting to rezone property west of Jefferson Avenue, north of Cotton Road from C1, local commercial <coughs> to MX1, Jefferson mixed use. Located at the parcel ID 15-09-28-326-043, it's the same numbers in the beginning, 044, 050, 051, 052, and 053. We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by Mr. Miller. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Jonathan, how long till it gets to the township board? Uh, once the draft minutes are available, uh, we'll put the package together that has to be submitted three weeks prior to the board meeting. Um, and they meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. So. We're probably looking into the second meeting in July. So this is going to be before the township board, and you can go voice your opinion to them too. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I make one more statement? Sure. Before uh, before these folks are probably going to leave. Um, also, please <coughs> keep an eye on the website on the Chesterfield Township website and look at our agendas when um, Mr. Monty or Mr. Acavetti decides to do something with this property this property there's going to be a site plan that's presented to us we certainly would invite you to come that evening and see what they're see what they're proposing uh, you can you can go on the township website and you can ask for uh, the agendas of all of them so mr. Yes. chairman if any of the residents have procedural questions as well, they can come into the office or give me a call, and I can, I'd be more than happy to walk them through, you know, when a notice is required, when it's not, and, you know, what timelines will look like on stuff. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, we'll move on to reviews. We didn't vote, did we? Yeah, you voted. It's unanimous. Yeah, we voted. Yeah. Yeah, we voted on it. Yeah. We voted to approve. Yeah. Absolutely. Sure, let's play the tape. I remember voting to vote today. We voted on it, right? Yeah, we voted. Okay, our, our Secretary uh, Rick will begin the items that we can do at a time. Does anybody disagree on that? There was, no. a, there was a motion. There was a motion, but I don't remember voting. It was, it, yeah, because you, yeah, you agreed for it. You, you polled oh, and you said yeah. everyone who wanted to vote tonight, but that wasn't, a, that wasn't an actual vote. It was individual yes, yes, yes. And then it was the motion, and then everybody. Yeah, Rick made the motion yes, unanimous. Yeah. Not opposed. I, okay, I, just want to make sure everyone's clear. Rick making the motion, and. and I'm, I supported it. And, and, and Paul has said supported by Miller. Correct. And, yeah. then, and then you voted. Then we voted. Then and then it was voted. unanimous. Okay, just make sure everyone's clear. Okay, Rick, go ahead. Item A is sign review 2022-34. Signorama <laughs> Sign Company requesting a sign variance for Faith Christian Center at 46000 Gratiot Avenue. The applicant is um, here this evening and would like to approach the board for his reasoning for the variance. Just, uh, all right, uh, my name is Joe Kilcoin. I'm the pastor of Faith Christian Center, uh, located at uh, 46,000 Gratiot. Also, 
I live at 26861 Christie Drive in Chesterfield. So um, I'll put down my business since that's what we're talking about here. So that is the church, right? And if anybody remembers, I don't know how far back you guys remember here in Chesterfield, out in front of our church, when it was initially built in the 80s, it was built as Metropolitan Tabernacle Assemblies of God. I have no affiliation. I've only been there since uh, end of 2012. And uh, on the other side of the drainage ditch there was Snover Road. And uh, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, they... They got rid of Snover Road, they bumped it out to Grash it, and then they put in Marketplace Boulevard. And when they did, the church that was there at the time purchased out to Grash it Avenue, which made the, the church sit way back off of, if you know the area right on the corner of Chesterfield and Grash it, the church sits way back off of uh, Grash it. And we have 630 feet of frontage on Grash it. And the sign sits way back off of Grash it as well. And so we're putting on, uh, as Mr. Palin knows, we're putting on an addition uh, to our church, a new sanctuary and building out. We have a lot of people that would come to the church for the first time and they would say things like, man, I've driven up and down Grash it, never knew you guys were here. I mean, I don't know, we got a big giant 35 foot cross in front, but um, you know, it, still, didn't know you guys were here, or I didn't know this was a church, or I didn't know. And so our, we realized that our site is kind of small in comparison to some of the signs around us, meaning the giant Walmart sign. But we saw the, um, we saw the codes that were in place and said, okay, well, we can't really increase the size of our sign. And when we um, got a hold of Signorama, the thought would be to make at least a portion of it uh, digital, EMC, um, you know, LED type of a thing to where we could do something to kind of draw attention to say, hey, we're here. You know, we're a church, and, you know, why don't you check us out? And so we, we also, we believe that putting on the addition is going to help. However, uh, when we looked at it, the um, reason why we're asking for a variance is the uh, code that's in place, I think it says something like 20% can be EMC or LED or whatever, and we're looking for something in the 40s. I would like to have something, I'd like to have the top quarter of it be, you know, Faith Christian Center, the bottom three quarters be all LED or EMC, but I... Maybe I shouldn't ask for that much, but I'd like to at least get closer to half uh, because if it's too small, you know, we're on grass yet. The sign's so far back. The church is so far back. People are whipping down there 55 miles an hour. If we have a small LED, it's just, you're going to, you know, no one's even going to, why even bother changing it? So we're looking at bringing, taking the top marquee part off to decrease the overall sign that we have off the top marquee but the actual signage keeping within the same footprint, but making the bottom half, not quite half, um, the, if I'm saying it right, EMC, LED, whatever you wanna, wanna call it. So that way it would help us with, a little bit with the advertising so that people would see it. I don't think it would be a monstrosity. Obviously our sign is small compared to Walmart and all, all of that there. And uh, just a, a mile up the road is the uh, new Genesis Credit Union and they have like 75% LED. Now maybe that happened just before, I don't know, uh, Jonathan, if you'd be able to, uh, maybe they got in before, but they're, they're pretty new, and I'm thinking, well, they got over half, and so it, we're just wanting to just have some advertising stuff, and, and we're limited, but we have so much frontage, and we're so far back off, we need something outside of maybe the guy that they're not using right now on, uh, I-94 that used to be for uh, Gibraltar Trade Center, and I don't think you'll let us put that big guy up there, but yeah. something else maybe <coughs> that what, would... Uh, <laughs> what is possibly. the overall height of the sign? Um, I'll, I'll let you speak to that. Is that including the base? Um, I'll <coughs> Currently the sign with the top on, on the top of it's 141 inches. He wants to take that piece off so it'd only be 118. It's gonna reduce it 23 inches from two feet. Okay, 
Any questions by the board? Mr. Demink? I'm good. Mr. Renault? Mr. Carr? Uh, personally, with the, some of the challenges that they have with their site, um, and the fact that they're reducing it by 23 inches, I, I mean, um, I personally don't have an issue with it. Um, I do agree that the wall, you know, the Walmart sign is a lot bigger, but I understand what they're trying to do, and, and that, you know, that corner is pretty vacant, so I don't see too big of an issue with it from my perspective. We, we have 7.3 acres, and there's two acres that are out in front of the church with just a sign on it. So that's, I appreciate that you understand. You yeah, know. yeah, understood. Mr. Is that it, Brian? Yeah, no, I'm good, thank you, sir. Mr. Leonard? I'm good, thank you. Mr. Dworsky? I'm good. Mr. Lexi? I'm good also. Mr. LaBelle? Question I have: I'm looking through the, you know, what was submitted to the township, and you're coming up with these dimensions, 118 and what have you. I'm not seeing it on the drawing. It wasn't on the drawing, so I actually went to the church uh, just before the meeting and got the dimensions off of myself. So, as far as the township is concerned, they're going to need something in writing, exactly what's going to happen with the sign, not just uh, you're not just hearsay this sure. evening. Yeah, I understand. We're going to need some kind of a drawing. Yeah, we have the drawing submitted. We just need to add the uh, height to it. We're not changing the existing structure other than lowering it because we're going to take that decorative fennel off the top. Okay. But I don't see that structure. writing there. The, the proposal that I have, what I have in front of me, doesn't state that. It doesn't, it, it doesn't give me a height of the sign. It doesn't give me any of that information. And you're saying that you've got it someplace else? Yeah, I, I just wrote it down. I wouldn't just measure it. So I can update the drawing and submit it to the township. Mr. Palin, should we table this until we get postponed? Post oh, yeah. Or, or you guys make the recommendation to the height. It's not our decision for the height. It's, you know, he has to tell us what he's doing. I mean, it, it would depend on it, how the planning commission is going to vote. If, the, if you guys are going to grant a variance, he stated that their their proposed height is 118 inches. So you could limit that. If you were going to make it a motion to approve that you would that variance would be for 118 inches. We're, we're saying we're going to come down from what it currently is. I understand your point. We, we maybe don't what have is the all height now. Well, it's it's currently 118 inches. What would, you uh, to show them this? Maybe. Do, would you mind if Can I, I approach? Just show you what it is and what we're taking off. We're trying to kind of so this is fit within. Structure. Right now, what we're going to do is take the post bar part off and just keep the cabinet. And then the work we're going to do is within the existing structure. We're not changing the structure. That's great. So what is it from the top of the sign? 118, the 118 inches. Yep. 118 inches. OK. That's the dimension that I was looking for. Thank you. Are you okay with that, Jonathan? Us approving it at a height of 118 inches? That's up to the Planning Commission, however you guys want to do yeah, it. I, Mr. Renault. Yeah, I do have my question now, uh, or questions, I should say. So in reviewing the, the submission package, and when I'm gathering, please anyone correct me if I'm uh, wrong, as it sits right now, the sign is non-conforming. What we're looking to do is modify the existing sign to be slightly smaller, but still non-conforming. And then I noticed in the packet that there was actually a form that was filled out, um, which is for existing non-conforming signs, that basically states even if you do the sign right now, by no later than March 30th, 2027, you're going to have to bring the sign into uh, compliance with the sign ordinance, which means you're basically buying about four and a half years of this exception. Right. So, so then would we potentially, and I don't know the answer to this, would we potentially come back for another variance to keep it? Or is that, I don't know. The variance would run with the land. Um, my assumption is, is that that affidavit was filled out when they submitted the original sign package, um, not knowing that the review is going to come back for, you know, a sign that doesn't meet the ordinance. Uh, do you want to elaborate on that? I know we've had this issue come up, so. I, 
Yes, unfortunately, this issue has come up a number of times. But even if you get this variant that runs with the land, it's still a non-conforming sign. And it's still going to have to be conforming by... by right. Right. So, so essentially what you're saying is, is you're getting a sign that's going to last just a handful of years. Correct. And then it's going to have to be smaller? <laughs> wow. It would have to meet the requirements of the current ordinance, which is 32 square feet and eight feet in height. Okay. And then the 25% for the electronic message sign. I guess I would kind of ask the question, we're here for a variance from the ordinance because of the uniqueness of this property. So wouldn't a variance for a larger sign for this property set the precedence? No, because it's still a non-conforming sign. Even with the variance, it's still a non-conforming sign. So if we came back in four years, we're still going to be asking for a variance for a non-conforming sign. You could come back again and ask. If the, ordinance, if the ordinance provides for it, you could come back again. But I do not know if the ordinance provides for it. That would be something we'd have to look into. Okay. Because honestly, I mean, in, look, in knowing what the approximate cost is going to be, I, that'd be a yeah. waste of a whole lot of money. No, I, I get it, and I appreciate <laughs> that. You know, so. I, I appreciate that thought. I because I'm I'm I wasn't aware of that in 2027 that that would be. And so, if correct me if I'm wrong, what what I think I'm hearing then is, you know, that we have non-conforming. We might could be granted the variance right now, and therefore go and change our sign, but. In 2027, you're going to have to change it again, right. barring, and, and now this is where my question would be, barring another variance in 2027, of which right now you can't guarantee me. Correct. All you're saying is maybe. Correct. Okay, okay. So, I'm, so I'm basing all this on a maybe in 2027 is uh, what I'm getting at, which. So we can make a motion to table. I think that's a good idea. I, up to, two to address that question. Can decide what you want to do. Well, and I guess I guess I would ask the board to look at it too, because if somebody add, added for a yard setback variance, you wouldn't grant that variance for four years and say it's going to expire in four years. You would grant that variance for that property. That's true. And, and That's this, true. But this is different because you've already got a non-conforming sign that the ordinance says you can keep for a specified period of years. Okay, so let's, the, let's approach it And the idea behind way. that is to let business owners get some value out of their sign for a number of years and have time to save money and bring their sign into compliance. So it's different than a regular variance. So let's approach it this way. If the sign didn't exist, there was no sign on the property, and we were here today proposing a sign for this property at 60 square feet for a new construction sign, as, as if it didn't exist, would that fall into a non-conforming? Because we're asking for a variance for a sign to fit a piece of property that has 650 foot of frontage on seven and a half acres. This is by far a unique property. There's no question, but that's not a question I could answer without looking at the provisions of the ordinance. Okay, I'm just, I'm throwing it out there. I mean, if we, would, if we decide to table it based on that, this, you know, whether we're using existing or new. Mr. Roy, I have this suggestion. Sure. And just an observation based on your comments. One thing that is unique, some communities have their sign ordinance in the zoning ordinance, and some communities have their sign ordinance as a standalone ordinance. In Chesterfield Township, it's a standalone ordinance. So the grandfathering provisions, so to speak, that apply <coughs> to a zoning ordinance are different when you're talking about a standalone general law ordinance so right. just in, in some communities you may you may find it's it's in the zoning ordinance and it's sub subject to a different set of standards in this community like some other communities have done it's a standalone ordinance so i just want to make that observation as well so i i would suggest that we table it for up to two meetings and you can decide okay well that because we can just go back and forth all night and not make a decision it's up to you to make the decision whether you want to put this sign up and in five years come back and have us make you conform to the new sign ordinance. 
Gotcha. Or no, well, at least we could look into it and get that answer as well, because we don't we don't have a definitive answer yet as part okay. of the other. So issue. within the next couple of weeks, you, you, you'll have more of a definitive answer. Stay in contact with Jonathan. Okay. And we'll come up with a better answer. Right, and then we'll be able to make a better decision on what. We'll all be a little better informed. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, right. let's make an informed decision. That so Walmart's going to have to majorly decrease their sign too. Am I right? I mean, because they're like a monstrosity next to ours. Or do they get special treatment in the city, Chesterfield? They have a sign package. Can we have a sign package? Yeah, they were part of the PUD development, so their signage was all approved as part of, of an overall package for them. Uh, okay, okay. I, won't, I, I would like on the table. I don't make so Walmart money. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we'll table it for a couple weeks. Okay. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Bell. You. Motion on that. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to uh, postpone a decision for up to two meetings. For sign review 2022-34. We have a motion by Mr. LaBelle, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thanks. Okay, see ya. Uh, approval of the minutes of the prior meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 19th, 2022. Motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Renault. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Communications, there is none. New business, none. Old business planners report, Mr. Roy. Anything? Nothing this evening. Jonathan, anything from your side? Nothing tonight. Comments from individual? Oh, no. <laughs> no audience participation. Comments from individual commissioners. Ralph. I think I said enough. Yeah, Mr. Lexi. I don't have anything. Thanks, Mr. Labelle. I'm looking for volunteers for pre planning. Mr. Levin? Right here. Mr. Lexi. I'm trying to give you guys a chance. Mr. Domingue? Jerry just wants to vote. Um, <laughs> you know, I stated, because that gentleman made that statement, so I wanted to make it sure that you know you guys weren't elected. There's no offense that you're appointed by the board that I was the elected one. So, you know, when people throw that out there, let me take the heat for it. So I did. Yeah. So I mean, that's why I threw that out there. And Mr. Miller, I'm sorry if I interjected on some of those no, people, right. but they started getting out of line, and I just felt okay. This is the way it's going to be especially when they started going back and forth and our board procedure is you get one bite at the apple. You were very lenient right, tonight and let them go a couple of times because there are people there. And I, didn't say, would, I didn't think it would go on like it did. <clears throat> you know. But I remember a lot of those faces, yeah. like say from that detail shop one. So as soon as uh, I, I knew where this was going to go tonight, so, but that's why I interjected. And I also said that, that, you know, you're appointed, I'm the elected one up here. You know, they make that comment. Come at me, not you guys. I'll take the heat on that one. Okay. Yeah. We had discussions in the past about putting rules on the back of the agenda. Whatever. That sounds like a good idea. I mean, we. I mean, in my my personal opinion, if we had the, the rules of how the the meeting operates, you're you're allowed X number one time. You must state your name, a number of minutes. If you have problems with the road, here's the number to the road commission. <laughs> uh, you know, if, you, if you're petitioning a sign, read the rules. <laughs> so it's just it's my a, opinion. It's Thanks. a good idea. That's a good idea. Uh, you know, how the meeting's going to flow. Because you don't want the band crew going back. Exactly. That's what you don't want it for. It's not a good basis. It's not a good basis. When, when the car wash detailing came about, I thought we kind of showed that we were for the community because we, and it's like they forgot all about that. Well, like the, we, the general public has a very short attention. Yeah, it's like, well, did you, you didn't want the big car wash. Well, we're trying to kind of pull this in to put some teeth into it. So there is a little more control over something nicer. Exactly. But that's how she prefaced as well. Yeah. Mr. Renell. Mr. Carr. Yep. Good, thank you. 
Mr. Leonard, you done? I'm good. With that, I have nothing. I'll make a motion to adjourn at 825. Support. A motion by Mr. Miller, supported by Mr. Domingo. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Oh, I just want to make one comment. Uh, I'm just going to thank everybody now for volunteering for the uh, mm -hmm. uh, really hey. so I want to make Troy. a comment, mm -hmm. too. So do I. So if I didn't vote, does that count as a no vote? Yeah. yeah. I don't remember voting. I don't know where to hey. go.